Hello, you're watching a tutorial video for Dynamic Page Scraper. Now the Dynamic Page Scraper, as you can see, it loads everything out in a browser window, which means it's executing JavaScript. For those of you trying to scrape content that loads it dynamically, you might notice that when you use the static page scraper, no content is able to be downloaded. However, by changing over to Dynamic Page, you can actually grab any content, even if it's dynamically loaded. Now the first step is to click on select item and as you can see it's highlighting items that we can pick from this page. Let's pick the header, add item, let's choose some paragraph content and add item. I can close the selector and this allows me now to interact with the page such as clicking buttons and clicking links. Every item that I clicked on has been added to our item list here. The first is the assigned macro code which we'll use later to build the output article. We have the selector, and we have the type of content it's finding, inner text by default. We can also grab the HTML. We can ask SEO Content Machine to try and detect content within a tag. We can also save the image data. There are two options to get the attribute content. HF would be for your link tag, and source would be to save the source URL of an image tag. We can take a screenshot of the current page and we can also interact with the page by sending a click to a selected element. A sample of what's been grabbed appears here and now we have some command buttons. The first two are pretty simple, they just change the order that rules are run in. We can grab the parent container which means based on this selector grab its parent which according to the Wikipedia is this selector Refresh sample. With the selector, you can actually type in your selection manually. And when you click refresh sample, it will update this and it will also update our macro code to match our selector. We have some filtering options, which I'll get back to in a second. And we can delete our macros here. Our macro code is where we build the output, place in our H1 and our paragraph content. And now we can see an output preview. We also see that same content as it were to be in a HTML browser. Going back up, I'm going to change this to in a HTML so we can get some styling. Now we have some links here. I want to remove the link but keep the text. As I scroll down, you'll see the filter section. So the first one is unwrap tags. I just want to unwrap all the anchor text tags. So that's done now. No more clickable links. The next thing I might be interested in is I see that every line isn't surrounded by any particular tag in general and I want them to be surrounded by paragraph tags. So what I can actually do is go to the filter section, wrap in paragraph. For each line that's been found, if it's under a certain character length, I can remove it. I can choose to remove lines based on whether they're using certain words. I can keep lines that use a word. I can also process each line using regex to find and replace text. I'm going to click save. You can see in the preview it's added the P and if I go down to my output preview, now each line is in its own paragraph. Now I notice that there are sub tags which I don't want. So let's go and remove them. So they've been removed. My original title and I can actually Type in the macro code box here, the text that I want to include in my output. So now it's in the H1 format. Here I notice that there's the word radio. Maybe in this example, I want to replace every instance of the word radio with bucket. So if we're going back to the filter in the regex replace, all I have to do is type in the word I want to match equals and this angled bracket. And I said bucket, click save. And when I go back, I'll see Every time the word radio has appeared, it's now been replaced with the word bucket. Following on are some other options. If we scraped any image tags, we can actually save those images online and save them to our hard drive. If we are wanting to create content in a CSV file, in this macro code section, we can actually format it ourselves so it's in CSV. And all this toggle will do is for each URL it's visiting, it's going to combine all that content into one file. We have rewriter options. We can apply a translator as well. Next up are task settings. We can change our task name. 
I can change the file name string and the save location. There are also options to schedule the task and to run another task once the dynamic scraper is finished running. The only thing we need to do is make sure that we have URLs to scrape. So I'm going to add the current page. Then I'm going to click on the run button. With the task set to run, we can see the output in the task log here. And now that it's finished running, I can navigate over to preview article and locate if I want to find where it is on my hard drive. Clicking on preview, we can see our downloaded content in this preview section. If you have any further questions about what you've seen today, please get in touch with me, seocontentmachine.com.